Republicans on the House Oversight Committee held a press conference today, and here's what they focused on. The president, former President Trump's son-in-law had some business deals, right? As Byron Donald said, we know what his businesses were. I'm not saying whether I agreed with what he did or not, but I actually know what his businesses are. What are the Biden businesses? That's the question. What business? While Congressman James Comer and House Republicans are still investigating Hunter Biden, we are rapidly approaching a default. And tonight, the former president, Donald Trump, said maybe we should, which, let me be clear, would be economic disaster for almost every facet of our economy. So let's discuss it with Democratic Congressman Jeff Jackson of North Carolina. Congressman, you are a freshman. Um, you watched either some or highlights of what the former president said tonight. And it's not about policy. It's simply about pushing lies. What's your reaction? This is going to be awful. I think a lot of the reaction isn't just from the fact that CNN gave him a platform. It's the fact that the future is going to look as bad as the past with respect to this election that we're about to go through. It's going to look like 2020. It's going to look like 2016. There's going to be a ton of propaganda, a ton of misinformation. A lot of people are going to fall for it. He's going to be totally shameless in pushing it. And it's just going to be a brutal experience for everyone. I think tonight was the wake up call that, in fact, we are about to go through this. He is going to be the Republican nominee. And it's probably 50 50 as to whether he actually wins the presidential election. And that's something everyone on my side needs to get really realistic about really fast. But here's what normally happens when you get a wake up call. You get a wake up call and then you do something about it. Right. We often say on this show, the truth matters, but only if you see it. I know you subscribe to this um, because you regularly share TikTok videos walking viewers through how government works. I want to actually share one of them. Watch this. It's really clear from working there for just a few months that most of the really angry voices in Congress are totally faking it. These people who have built their brands around being perpetually outraged, it's an act. I've seen a bunch of examples. Here's one. I've been in committee meetings that are open to the press and committee meetings that are closed. The same people who act like maniacs during the open meetings are suddenly calm and rational during the closed ones. Why? Because there aren't any cameras in the closed meetings, so their incentives are different. So what do we do with that? What do we do with the fact that when the cameras are there, the divisions are deep, the show is on, when the cameras are gone, it's a different story. But what happens with the fact that most of the American people don't even know the truth, and a lot of people don't want to know it? Look, I think your instinct, and you said at the top of the show, how can media sort of solve for this. And it can't. And that's really frustrating, but it's true. I mean, your job is going to remain the same, frankly, no matter who the Republican nominee is. It's to be straightforward and honest in your reporting. And that won't solve for the Trump problem. It should. Being able to expose who this guy is should be enough to make him unelectable, but it's not. But the good news is that of the 200,000 or so people who are actually going to determine the outcome of this next presidential election, the swing voters who live in the three or four key swing states. He didn't win over those people tonight, doubling down about his lies about the election, doubling down about January 6th, mocking the person he was just found liable for sexually abusing. Those people, they were not the ones clapping and cheering in that auditorium tonight. Those people are going to decide the outcome of this next election. Well, Here's how people vote, or you know better than I do. People vote based on what affects them, not offends them. And right now, grievance media and politicians love the culture wars. They love talking about what they're offended by. But what affects them is the economy. It's true. Behind closed doors, when the cameras aren't there, do you think there is more common ground, especially as it relates to this debt ceiling? We heard the former president tonight say maybe we should default. We've heard other members of Congress, Republicans, talk about maybe we deserve to. If we defaulted, the, the, the reaches, we can't even get our head around how bad it would be. Does Congress realize this? I think so. I think you're 
I think you're absolutely right in basically saying that this whole debt ceiling episode is exhibit A for fake anger, for fake outrage. It's them trying to sell something to a certain segment of society that they can be angry about, full well knowing that if it actually came to pass, they would immediately regret it. I think they're doing this brinksmanship, counting on the fact that it's not going to come to pass. Because, because of course, it would be a disaster. It takes every single problem that our country currently has and makes it worse, including the debt, because we would have an immediate recession. And when you go into a major recession, government spending goes up. So, of course, it's counterproductive to all of their policy goals. One of your freshman colleagues in Congress is George Santos. You're a former prosecutor. <laughs> What's your reaction to these charges? And if he's, quote unquote, back in the office tomorrow, how are you and the rest of your colleagues going to treat him? Hey, George, what'd you do yesterday? <laughs> It's so deeply weird that this guy is a colleague, and I expect him to be back in the office. I really do. I expect to see him in the hallway, and it's just beyond the pale, honestly. Look, I'm a former prosecutor. I read the indictment. They got him. They just, they've got plenty of documentary evidence. A ton of his crimes are very much in writing, and they got him. And frankly, if you're his defense attorney, you are telling him, hey, George, this is not the kind of case that you take to trial. This is the kind of case that you settle and that you hope for a reduced sentence. And part of that sentence is inevitably going to be his, his exit from Congress. Look, I'll be very surprised if he finishes his term. McCarthy has a margin of five. If I were McCarthy, I would deal with a margin of four and get rid of this guy. I shouldn't be laughing. It is absurd. It's ridiculous. But this is our government, and it is serious. Congressman, really nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Jeff Jackson. Thank you.